Hi, my name is Father Nathan. I'm the president of the St. John Institute, and I'm here to accompany you during this amazing season of Lent when you, like the saints, are tested and tried and open yourself to cooperate with that by fasting. It's not easy to fast. It's not popular to fast. But my goodness, is it ever meritorious and glorious to fast. And I want you to know you're not the first ones to fast. We, if you look, go back to the New Testament, St. John the Baptist lived in the desert. I look at him as a saint, just as a, a fellow companion on the journey. I'm sure he was as hungry as you are. <laughs> I'm sure that St. John the Baptist would have loved to have a big ice cream sundae with nuts on top, you know? And yet he was living in the desert. He was doing that to open his soul to a deeper hunger and to let his soul be free as he thirsted for the coming of the bridegroom. And when the bridegroom came, he recognized him. Our Lord Jesus Christ, of course, fasted. And when you feel overcome and tempted and thrown about by the waves of your own selfish desires or your fleshly desires, you can lean out your head on him. And he'll say, I know I've been there and I give you my victory. He's not the only one. There are saints throughout history that have fasted. I'm thinking of the Desert Fathers. Here's a great quote by one of the Desert Fathers called Abba John the Short. I guess he wasn't a tall guy, he was a short guy. But he said, if a king wants to take a city whose citizens are hostile, he first captures the food and water of the inhabitants of the city. And when they are starving, subdues them. So it is with gluttony. If a man is earnest in fasting and hunger, the enemies which trouble his soul will grow weak. I'm the shortest saying, hey, put yourself in front of your enemies, impatience, anger, all that stuff. Go after them with, with, with ardor. Go after them as if you weren't gonna quit and be strategic about it. And he says a secret, it's fasting. I'll be darned, it's true. Abba the John the Short, pray for us. St. Patrick, you know, when he was, he said, he had much badness of mind, right? In his mind, he was having a dark day and he was angry because of the sin of this world. He turned to fasting. According to a story in the tripartite life of St. Patrick, when he went to Croagh Patrick, which is this mountain in Ireland also called Kilpatrick in County Mayo, there he climbed to the top, sat down and told a passing angel that he would not leave the mountain, quote, till I'm dead or until all my requests are granted. Once again, and he stayed there fasting and he neither ate nor drank according to the legend for 40 days and 40 nights and inhaling this dialogue with God where he was fighting for souls. And when his time ended, God came and promised Patrick all kinds of wonderful things about how Ireland would be converted and souls would be brought into heaven because of his prayers. What an example he gives us. And then, of course, I couldn't help but throw in St. Francis de Sales. What an amazing quote he gives to us. He says, there's rules to fasting. Don't bother to do it if it's just some legalistic thing. If you're just trying to lose weight, do it and put your heart into it. This is my word of encouragement to you as Lent goes on and you start to become discouraged. Remember that the value to this fast is in love and in the heart. St. Francis says there's three principal conditions for fasting. The first condition is that we must fast with our whole heart, willingly, wholeheartedly, universally, and entirely. He says, put yourself in it. Don't stay on the outside. Commit yourself to this wonderful thing. The second condition is to never fast through vanity, but always through humility. Now that's especially good because you're starting to lose weight at this point <laughs> and you're saying to yourself, this is wonderful. And he says, ah, remember though, that what you're really fasting from are the excesses of the way that your passions exude into, into interference with your soul and into love, and their humility is the cure. And then the third condition necessary for fasting well is to look to God and to do everything to please him. Withdrawing within ourselves an imitation of the great saint, St. Gregory the Great, who withdrew into a secret place where he remained for a time. Right? This idea of being, remember that it's about prayer. Be it St. Francis de Sales, St. Patrick, St. Abba the Short, St. John the Baptist, you're in the company of great saints and you're doing something great for God. Call upon them for help, be encouraged, because one day what you're doing now will have fruit that, that will last in the souls and the lives of the people who are close to you and for our church. And most of all, you're pleasing God. This is a great thing.